Hi, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the Bison Video Blog. It's our year-end award show. We've been doing this for three years now. And along with Eric Peterson and Jeff Kolpak, I'm Dom Izzo. We're into 2014. But well, first, we have to put our wraps on 2013. I see you made it back from Frisco, both of you. You're in high demand with those Dynasty Mode shirts. Everybody wants one. Yeah, I guess if you make a desirable product, people <laughs> want a piece of it, right? But you haven't changed clothes in two weeks. <laughs> Hey, You're this is my go-to jacket, man. <laughs> You're still in business mode. I, I am in That's business it. mode. Well, we're back here to take a uh, look at 2013. We did this a couple years ago when we crowned ourselves the video blog champs of the year. I don't think there's any dispute still about that. Of course. I think we're still three-time champs in that. But we want to look back at just what this season was and the guys that stood out of it. Obviously, with 24 seniors and so many guys that had great seasons, it's going to be hard. We're going to miss some guys. But I think we'll try uh, to narrow that down. We have six different award categories that we're going to uh, go through after a careful screening process with each of us uh, to determine that. We're starting it off with Offensive Player of the Year. Uh, I'll lead off with seniority. I don't think there's any doubt about who your guy was going to go with, and that's the quarterback. Absolutely. Brock Jensen, the leader of the offense. He was most consistent this year of any quarterback in the FCS. 66%. I'll even include your guy, Garoppolo, because he did it in the playoffs, and <laughs> yes. Garoppolo struggled at the end there. Uh, he just had that it factor, and I think uh, NDSU, uh, you know, it starts with the controls. It starts with Brock Jensen. 34 touchdowns, Big E, to seven interceptions. You see that. Nine rushing touchdowns. I mean, he did it all this season. He took his game, which already was a pretty high level, especially after his sophomore year. It's what Jeff and I talked about a couple years ago. and took it to a whole other level. Yeah, and I think what Jeff – you know, kind of brought up there. I think the consistency was the key. There at times last year he threw the ball well, but he had that kind of, you know, I don't know, throwing slump in the middle of the year where he threw a number of interceptions mm -hmm. and a number of them were pick sixes. But this year you never saw the, the games where he threw two or three interceptions. No. He was very consistent. You maybe saw one a game, but not that multiple interceptions. And you just saw that throw against Indiana State. Yeah, that Trevor yeah, Gephardt one. Pinpoint yeah. accuracy all year. And that, and he, that was a main guy as well. And we'll get to him in a second and Zach Fraub, but that long, Ball ability, which they did not have in the past couple of years. Your offensive player of the year, who are you going with? Well, Kopak takes the easy thing with the quarterback, Brock <laughs> Jensen. But you notice in all those highlights, was anyone near touching him? No. He had clean pockets, those long 50 yard routes no. to Zach Vra had the time to do him. So that's why I'm going with the Billy Turner. Mm. And, you know, even to expound that a little bit, the offensive line. Yeah. I just thought, you know, a guy like Turner, you never had to worry about him. Like, you block that guy, and the other four could worry about the rest of the pass rush. Uh, you know, they're great in run block, great in pass blocking. They, they threw for 35 touchdowns this year, and they rushed for 35 yeah. touchdowns this year. And you just saw the clip of where he blocked two guys <laughs> on, a, on a blitz pickup in yeah. that, you know, drive at Kansas State. So if he's the best player on the best offensive line in school history, as Cole Pack likes to have called, I'm going to call him the offensive MVP for this season. He didn't allow a sack. I mean, that's the true test. of In 15 games, he allows no sacks. That tells you how good he was this the, season. The true blind side, if yeah. you will. If you go back yeah. to the movie, Billy Turner epitomizes that position. And he, a four-year starter and obviously a shot to play in the NFL, his prospects going up. My offensive player of the year, I debated with a couple guys. Uh, obviously, the running back is always a highlight position at NDSU. I'm going with John Crockett. I think he was even better in his second season than he was in his first. He ran with a 40 this season. He had a lot of these plays where he just burst through the seam. He would come into the game. Obviously, uh, O'Jury started all the games this season, but he would come in on that second series guy and just burst through the hole. The, the numbers on him this season, you look, he had 1,398 yards. 10 touchdowns every time it seemed, Jeff, he would come into the game and just give a burst for the Bison. John Crockett is one of my favorite players on the team, yeah. bar none. But he didn't even lead the team in rushing. He goes with the second I, leading I, rusher on the team. I, I, hey, we're going to have disagreements, and I know, but every time he came in, he, he made an impact in the game, though. He I, just did. He I burst did, through holes. I just think you like that his nickname is Taz. And he's, <laughs> he's brought a stuffed Tasmanian devil into the yes. press conference. Yeah, you're off to a slow you, start. You love style. <laughs> Dom is all about style points. He's a TV guy. I am. Style over substance. But he did have a great year and like you said he's a guy sometimes if that offense seemed a little sleepy he'd come in and you know kind of give it a kick start with his explosion and his spin moves and some of the stuff he brought to I the will table. say this this game here you guys were not at the Southern Illinois game in the second half SIU could not stop me a three long touchdown run just blew the game open including this one at South Dakota State you guys were at that one where he salted away 
I think he's obviously the incumbent starter next season at running back, and he's he's a huge key in 2014. Nobody was better in the fourth quarter in the yep. FCS than John Crockett at running back. All right, defensive player here. Now, this ought to be an interesting debate here. Biggie, I'm going to have you lead off because there's so many different guys who you could have at the top of the list. Who takes your uh, pick? Well, this goes back to the point, like, they didn't have a lot of All-Americans. The numbers no. are so balanced. That's why the defense was good. Everybody did their job, and within that, they had guys with star-type talent. But I'm going to go with Kyle Emanuel. <laughs> Uh, you know, Carlton Littlejohn is a guy who played well, you know, in the secondary. Dudzik had six interceptions. But Emmanuel's the guy who, who put the heat on up front. I think seven and a half sacks, eight quarterback hurries. And I believe that offensive line kind of set up, I mean, the offensive line, the defensive line kind of set up the rest of the defense, you know. You know, tying up tackles, making the quarterback get rid of the ball maybe a little earlier, and that, and that led to some, you know, interceptions. He had that big uh, return in the championship yep. game and almost scored. So he, he made plays that m normal defensive ends don't make. And just, you know, he's a guy that was good at stripping the ball and punching it out of there. So I just think he brought a lot of things to the table. He's a three-year starter at that position as well. He will be a four-year starter at defensive end. He's been an impact guy ever since he got into the lineup. Right. And when you have that outside pass rush, pass rush it just – Opens up a lot of things in the middle, creates pressure with the defense, and uh, decent pick, Eric. I'll, I'll give you that. He had a couple of block field goals. He had that one, you guys remember, too, at Youngstown State, where the Penguins were driving early in the second quarter, trying to get some momentum. He blocked that one. What is a special teams player of the year, or is a defensive player of the year? Hey, it's, it's all about preventing points. That's if true. If you're preventing points, you're playing defense. So I, I, I like his versatility. Can I just go back, by the way? John Crockett led the team in all-purpose yardage. All right, that's that's pretty There's good. No going I'm just back. saying. I'm what just are we saying. talking about? No going I'm back. Just, I'm what are we talking about? Special let, teams. No, we brought offense. it all purpose yarded. Your defensive player of the year. Before we get off track here. Easy pick, Carlton Littlejohn. When Grant mm. Olson went out, the leader of the defense, the guy we thought was most difficult to replace. No Carlton stepped in, and the Bison didn't lose a beat. End of story. There you go. Point made. He was, I, I mean, he was terrific all season long. I, I, I can't argue that pick. And he even brought maybe a different element. I think Grant may have maybe been better at stuffing that inside run game. But you just saw so many times where Little John had dropped 15, 20 yards downfield, like yeah. we saw earlier with the interception or deflect the pass. Just the range he gave you at middle linebacker. And he was tough between the tackles, and he was a very sure tackler. Right so there, yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he provided that leadership that you thought you may lose with Grant Olson not in the lineup, and here you see him on the blitz. So he's another guy like Kyle Emanuel yeah. could do a little bit of everything. 89 tackles to lead the team, seven of them for loss, three sacks, an interception. I mean, he did everything this season. He really did. And, again, he's going to be – I think he'll probably be a team captain in 2014 with the amount of football he's played. He should be. They have all three linebackers yeah. back. What is your pick? I'm going with Christian Dudzik, and I think he really elevated his game in 2013. He led the team in interceptions. He was a constant in the secondary back there, already a secondary that had a couple superstars in Marcus Williams and obviously with Colton Heagle coming back. But I think Dudzik was tremendous this season. He finished up, uh, he had 56 tackles, three of them for loss. I mentioned he had six picks, and I'm not even talking about East's favorite subject today in special teams, but he had plenty of plays like that where he would go into the backfield, Big E, and blow up a run play. And he's a guy who played quarterback to start his career, so yeah. he had that coverage skills into a guy who plays safety, and he got better, like you said, I think, yeah. at coming up and, and stuffing the run. So I mean, that, that's why this defense was good. It wasn't one guy. We, we've highlighted three guys who all had very good years in their own right, and we're not, yeah. you know, we're still not even talking guys about <laughs> Levon Perry Marcus and, you know, Williams. Travis Beck, yeah. Marcus Williams, Drevlo. who could be an NFL yeah. draft pick, Ryan Drevlo. I mean, this, this defense was deep and it was talented. By the way. All three guys are coming back next year. That's also very important to note for 2014. This is an interesting category. I'm curious to see where you guys uh, were going to go. Colpack, I'll have you lead off with most improved player in 2013. I go with C.J. Smith because we all know Marcus Williams, what he provided as a shutdown corner. That, of course, means uh, the other corner is going to get no picked doubt. on. And I thought C.J. Smith, who wasn't highly recruited out of high school in the Twin Cities, I think NDSU is one of his few offers, one of those guys like, oh, I guess it might be an okay mm. uh, okay recruit he's really elevated his game i saw that at practice two years ago when i could go to practice <laughs> and i thought this guy had some here we go <laughs> had some potential the play he made in the championship game no doubt. was was just uh typical of his improvement during the year he had a lot of those plays too biggie where he was just all over he led the team in past yeah. breakups yeah you always look at interceptions but he made so many good plays where it looked like it was a completion and he'd come in and knock it away you talk about the interception at the national championship yep. game that was definitely a game changer but we saw earlier that interception against northern iowa to seal one of their really questionable yep. games and he was just the I never really seen, saw him get beat by a lot. 
I mean, he might have gotten beat, but he he wasn't a guy where you saw a guy four or five yards behind him. He was always around the ball, yep. and if something was completed on him, it was usually a contested catch. So uh, it's a good pick, Cole Pack. I hate to admit it. The only one game I can remember was the Missouri State game, and there was Marcus Williams got beat a couple times in that game as well. That's the only time I can remember, just to Biggie's point, where Smith was uh, got beat by a guy. And, uh, and Biggie always says corners are going to get beat. It happens. Right, and most improved, he really got better after that. How about your choice on most improved? Well, it's not a guy who was necessarily, I'm not necessarily you think a guy who was bad, but I think Zach Vra, just most improved yeah. because he went from good to great. And now he set the school record for receiving yards in the season, receiving touchdowns. And he's the guy who gave this offense a different element than it had last year. And the year before, maybe a little bit with, you know, Warren Holloway, but how many, you know, I think it was at the Missouri State game or was it Southern Illinois where he caught the one right before halftime. Yeah, yep. How many times did you see Zach Vra catch like a 50-yard touchdown after the team had, you know, <laughs> fallen behind or was tied early? He's, he's another guy who seemed to jumpstart this offense when it maybe got off to a slow start. And it gave Brock Jensen another option to look for besides Ryan Smith. I mean, Ryan Smith's kind of been the security blanket the last two years, but Vra gave him the element and around the goal line. Yeah. I mean... He, he, how many contested catches did he have? You just saw that one there. The one in the national championship game, Brock Jensen threaded the needle, but a defender had his hand in there, and he still came up with the catch. As much as I like to argue with you, you're spot on on this analysis. And this is the touchdown that Biggie was talking about at Southern Illinois right yeah. before the half where the Bison needed a play, and he went up. There's another contested yeah. catch. He developed into the guy, Jeff, in that 2010 class. He was Mr. Football in 2009. He became the player that the Bison were hoping he would be after two seasons missing. I remember talking to his high school coach, Jeff, Jeff Erdman, when he got recruited, he couldn't believe he did, the Gophers didn't take him yeah. because of his ball skulls. He said this guy can get the ball in traffic better than anyone he's ever seen. He was right. My most, most improved guy is Esley Thornton, a player who had to switch positions. He did it right before the start of the 2012 season, but I thought he really came on, and, and he talked about it in numerous post-game shows we had during the season, where he, especially after Grant Olson got hurt, that Thornton came into the lineup and did a solid job. I'm not saying he was outstanding, but his numbers in the season, he ended up with 44 tackles on the year. He played in 15 games, obviously started four after Olson got hurt, but I thought he was an impact guy, and for Making a switch, as hard as it is, from quarterback to linebacker, I thought he did a really, really nice job. I think job. I talked to Chris Kleiman in the preseason. and goes, last year he was a quarterback trying to play linebacker. Yeah. This year he was a linebacker, and I, I think we saw that. And, you know, when you talked about Grant Olson got hurt, I didn't have – I had less question on whether Carlton Littlejohn can play the middle. To me, it was like, could Esley Thornton fill that spot that Carlton Littlejohn did at the outside? And he did. He came in, and I think one game he had a couple nice goal line stands. Yep. And, you know, he they didn't miss a beat. I mean, that front seven didn't look any, you know, in ways – they had Grant Olson and Marcus Williams gone, and the defense was just as stout as it was with them two, and with those two in there. So that just sh shows the depth this team had. Well, my defensive player of the year, Carlton Littlejohn, is a direct correlation to Esley filling that role. Do you believe he's a starter? Thornton will be a starter at linebacker? Absolutely. Football? Absolutely. All three linebackers, absolutely. All right. Now this is where we get a little off the board here. Player to watch in 2014. I'll have you lead off with who you're looking forward to in spring football. My, my player is a redshirt freshman, Nathan Tangaway. They lose five guys on the defensive yeah. line after this season. And defensive tackle nose guard with Levon Perry, Drevlo, Schatz. I mean, those guys man that position like men. And now you're going to bring some freshmen into the into the mix. Yep. And Nathan Tagaway is a big recruit, a big kid, and he's got to have to step up right away. Him and Nick Jacobson in the middle, we're hearing a lot about him. Brad Ambrosius, we know, played as a true freshman on the defensive end. Obviously, those are guys that are going to have to step up and be big in spring football as we go forward. My player to watch is a guy that I think Bison fans have come to know and love, and that's Andrew Bonnet. Already, I think he's a burgeoning superstar. Everyone remember this play against Ferris State. He just where he, wanted to get this I did highlight because it's the highlight. Just wanted to get this I highlight love that play. But remember, Biggie, he almost did it again at Youngstown State. He wanted to do it. And he caught three touchdowns this season. Every time you look at this, is another one. Watch where is the Youngstown defensive back just bounces off of him. I mean, there's no stopping this guy. He is a load. I know he's listed as a fullback. But I wouldn't be surprised they move him out of tight end in 2014 because he can catch the ball and he does this. Watch, he just runs over guys. The funny thing is I've never seen a fullback where people like exhale when he gets the ball. It's like <laughs> Jose Canseco or a home run hitter coming to Here's the plate. Here's another one. This is the one where he wanted to jump again. He was, he was thinking You know, about when a home run, or, home run hitter comes to the plate in baseball, everyone exhales and is waiting for something to big happen, something big to happen. Every time he caught the ball, <laughs> yeah. you sense the fans are waiting for him to hurdle somebody <laughs> or run somebody over. So every time he got the ball, you could hear kind of a gap. 
gas from the crowd. So he was a very entertaining guy for playing fullback. Another guy, Kolpak, that was not highly recruited out of Iowa. It went way under the radar, and now he's become a stud. With Kevin Vodlin, though, coming back for his sixth year, I don't think you move Bonnet. He stays no where he plays. Absolutely. Put. Your player to watch for 2014. Well, we've got a little bit of this guy on special teams, but I think Nick DeLuca. Mm. We talk about will Esley Thornton start, won't he start, but I think Nick DeLuca is going to get a lot of reps. They'll rotate him, and he already looks like a man. I mean, when I interviewed him, you know, in spring practice, he looked like a junior, you know, a senior, just on his size. He's 6'3", about 230, 235. I mean... You could tell the speed. He'd be the first guy on, on, on kickoff yes. sometime. I think right here we'll see him up and the guy. Yep. I mean, he he's a guy who can run. He's big, and he seems to have good instincts. And I, I think, you know, losing Grant Olsen and some of, that, some of that grit in the middle, he'll be a guy to watch next year. I'm going to put just an asterisk next to my guy as well. That's an outstanding one. I think Bo Likas is another one as well. I know the secondary is loaded with returners, but he made impact plays on special teams, and he hits a ton. I think he's going to be one to watch, too. He's a strong kid, too. If you ever look at him, you look at the way he plays. He plays real physical. Well, just one last thing on Bo Likas, too. I mean, you're losing uh, Brian Shepard. I mean, is he going to fill that Brian Shepard role? He's a big kid. Surely you have Dudzik and and, um, Hegel back, but part of their strength is they had kind of that roving safety. So you you move Likas to that uh, type of outside linebacker hybrid that Hegel do, or do you move Hegel down? So I think he can give him some versatility if he can play the role you think he's going to play next year. Play of the year. This is one that was hotly debated. I think for some fans, it's a slam dunk. I'll have you lead off on this one. Well, I'm going to go a little bit off the beaten path. I, I think it's Derek Lang's 11-yard uh, catch on that third down wow. down in Kansas State. And here's why I say so. Everything that happened this year was based off this drive, and this drive does not happen without this play. That's true. I mean, you can argue this catch helped them get game day, and everything seemed to steamroll from there. I, I think the confidence grew, you know, saying, hey, we just beat an FBS team that played in a BCS bowl game last year. Not that this team lacked confidence, but I think this was kind of the thing that jump-started the whole season, and that, that really got in their mind, we could go undefeated, because this was the one game you circled like, I don't know yeah. if they can win this game. And they won it, and it kind of sparked the whole new It was a huge season. play, so Colt, it really play. was. It was. You're right. I'll give you that, that. That sparked that drive and maybe sparked the whole season. Uh, but I still think my pick's better when we get to well, it. Well, go ahead. What's your play? Well, a big stage, right? I mean, what's the biggest play on the biggest stage? Of course, it's a blocked field goal by Kyle Emanuel. It changed the momentum of that game. It was 7-7 seven to seven with Cold Thompson Hegel. driving. Well, Hegel got the block, and, and Emanuel, Emanuel picked it up. Picked it up. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> got ahead of myself. <laughs> But it was 7-7, Towson's driving, yep. going for the field goal, going for the go-ahead points. He go bursts in, blocks it, Emmanuel picks it up, and uh, the Bison roll from there. It really did change the momentum of the game. We talked about it on the post-game show after that, that Towson was moving the football, Terrence West was getting his yards, and then everything just snapped like that with the, with the block. I don't know, big stage, 53,000 people <laughs> in, in Manhattan. You guys are ridiculous. In front of 550,000 television fans it was on pretty Fox good. Sports. I guess that's not a big enough stage for Colpac. He needs like a million dollar audience, but I agree. You know, the championship game, you play for championships, yep. and that, that, that turned the game around. And after that, Towson didn't have much of a chance. You mentioned off the beaten path. I think mine is more off the beaten path with my play of the year. I'm going with Zach Frost's touchdown on fourth and six what? against Northern Iowa. The, the, at this point, it's 23 to 10. Northern Iowa at that point. Then on fourth and six, and we talked about this on the live blog. Do they kick the field goal or do they go for the touchdown? You don't and kick then the field goal. Jensen threw an absolute fastball to Vrod. I mean, at 23 17. And just like that, just like what Biggie's saying about the t- championship game, the momentum right there at Colpag went right back to the Bison. Did you see Derek Langner pick up the blitz? He did. Another, another one there. Another heady yeah. play by that senior. Uh, fourth and six. I kick. You're saying going for it. Uh, I, I can see that. Although sometimes I think you should park that theory of yours, but <laughs> you're, you're like Chuck the Pigskin. You're down you are. 13 in the you fourth are, quarter. I know. You're still but you need two points, scores. Though. You always say, you, don't you take points? Chuck the Pigskin. Two touchdowns <laughs> wins. A field goal and a yep. touchdown, you lose. I understand. I'm saying in this, in this situation, yes. In this you go situation, for it. yes. If it was early yeah. in the third quarter, I think you take but you're, the points. You're all Chuck the Pigskin. You're like, go yeah. for it, go no, for no, it, go for it. Okay, okay. Rob Ambrose of Towson decided to kick the field goal in the championship <laughs> yeah. game. Yeah. We all saw how that turned out. out. And everyone was, you know, giving a hard time to the New Hampshire coach. Hey, he wanted to win the game. Yep. He wanted to go up 14 nothing and try to put you know some strain on NDSU. Right, Not Chuck. you know kick the field goal. I Let's always, chuck it right I now. I knew we were going to have some good debate with our picks. Before we wrap up now, we have to first thank everyone who hosted us for our 15 different pregame yeah. shows we did this season. All of them had fabulous audiences and great interaction. 
No, but now we have to pick our best one. So I'll have you decide. What is your best pregame show? Because you had the best props. There's no doubt about that. This. I'm sure Colpac's pick is going to be something where he was the star <laughs> of. But I'm going to pick one where I felt the fans were the star of. And that was the Towson pregame where we just kind of stood in one of those yes. middle rolls and uh, tailgate and the, the fans just surrounded us. And just the crowd interaction to me is what stood out about that. They're, they're into it. They started chanting belt. You know, they're giving <laughs> Dom a hard time and laughing at him cracking jokes about me. You know, I'm, I'm glad you kept your clothes on this time because I didn't have any <laughs> t-shirts in hiding, but uh, just Towson, championship game, the cra- the fans were into it, so I'm going with that. Let's one. hear a little bit from that, from the Towson game. Does anyone here want the belt? <laughs> uh, see, they want it. <laughs> and <here> they- <laughs> I knew that was going to, there it is, I knew it was there. <laughs> Obviously, that's what's at stake here for NDSU. You mentioned, thank you. It's it's nice, a nice bling. You mentioned though everything that's on the line. Yeah, that's that's about right. Can we park the you belt know? after this year though? We may have to park the belt. I need I need a new prop. If anyone has, anyone out there has some ideas about some new props, it's hard to park the belt though. Everyone, I can't. Everybody everyone loves asks it. For it. They do. From game one to game fifteen, they ask for it. I may not park it, but I may have to limit it. <laughs> it can't be out every game. Limit the belt. There's no way to follow that up. I had to follow up all season with my prediction, which always got lost. People always ask me, Dom, you didn't pick the game because we're all roaring from what Big E did. My favorite pregame was when the crowd turned against us, specifically you, for the Northern <laughs> Iowa game where we were huddled together. Another cold day for the Northern Iowa pregame show. Let's stir it up. I'm going with Northern Iowa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's, there you have it. Each of you, you guys, you guys are just so gutless. Sir. <laughs> How true. Now, see, that's perfect because you picked NDSU to go unbeaten, and then you whop, you flip flopped on us by picking Northern Iowa. Got my the name game. on the Chubbs marquee. It was <laughs> all worth it. It was all worth it. We saved the best for last. Your favorite pregame. Well, my favorite started earlier in the week when we decided to recreate the Bison opening. <laughs> so the photographer and I go down to the Bison locker room. We're told you can't go in the Bison locker room. Yes. We were recreated by going to the opposite side of the dome and go out the visitor's way the other way. Well, as we walk by the locker room, it's open. So I go, Chris, get your camera. Let's go right now. We got to go before somebody comes up. And so we did that, and uh, it was hard to keep the straight face. I mean, when I came out and tried to create the Craig walk, which took, I don't know, one take one. That's good. Good work on that. I, I worked on yeah. it. I thought you were going to fall flat on your face. You're leaning forward so much. I thought you're just going to tip over, but you, you, you kept your balance. I can but, uh, appreciate that. Yeah, it was a, a, a mission accomplished. Let's take a look. Wow, well, that's an entrance. Huh? How did that, how did that go? Wow, that was exhilarating, huh? <laughs> I think I You're should lead the team star. out next year. You might. You could talk yeah. to Coach Kleiman about that yeah. for 2014. I think so. He wants to endear himself to the media. Let's start <laughs> off. But you said it. It would be about him, right? Yeah, it's all about him. <laughs> Great job, Cole Pack. We're just along for the ride. There you have it, folks. We're putting a bow on 2013 and our football coverage with our award show. For Big E, Eric Peterson, and Jeff Kolpak, I'm Dom Izzo. That's the latest edition of the Bison Video Vlog.